for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. When it comes to the different choices you have for fish and species to put in your tank, there's quite a few different options that you have. However, not all of those options are going to be for the better. Today's video is going to be six different species that I would not ever recommend to somebody to put in their home aquarium. Now, I've made this list based on my personal opinion um, on the average home aquarium that I see. A lot of these species you'll probably find in public aquariums, but I feel like that's a different set of systems and everything else that's going on. So for the average home aquarium, these are six species I would not recommend for you to keep. Number one is going to be an octopus. Over the past few years, octopus have gained a lot of popularity, probably due in part to the documentary that came out called My Octopus Teacher, where the narrator told us how fascinating that octopuses can be and how intelligent they are and how interactive they can be. It made us all fall in love with them and want to have a little slice of the ocean in our home tanks. However, if you watched the documentary or know anything about octopuses, you know that they don't have a very long lifespan. They only live one to two years, which means when you would get one, you'd probably fall in love with it, learn all about it, and then it would no longer be with you. Another downside to keeping an octopus is that they are escape artists. Again, if you've seen the movie Finding Dory, you probably already know this or have heard stories of octopuses getting out of their enclosures. So you would have to have a pretty secure uh, tank to keep one. Not that it hasn't been done, but I honestly wouldn't recommend it. Now, if you would like to have an interactive creature that you can just really see the intelligence of it, I would recommend that you consider um, one of the fish in the puffer fish group. Honestly, they have amazing personalities. They're incredibly intelligent and you can even teach them tricks and you can watch them learn. So while it's not quite an octopus, they do have a lot of personality and they're a lot of fun to keep. Okay, let's move on to the second species on my list and that is a stingray. Now you might be saying, hey Hillary, I've seen some small ray species that are available at my local fish store, but I'm still gonna tell you, I wouldn't recommend it. They can be really fun and exciting to keep, but they are very, very messy species. Just the number and the kind of food that you have to feed them and the way that they eat it, they make a pretty big mess, which means you're gonna have to have some serious filtration on your tank and you'll likely always be battling some high nutrients. Now, I know they are really cool, which is why I have this recommendation, and, and that is a flounder. Now, most of the flounders that I've seen for sale, there haven't been that many of them, but I feel like they're gaining popularity. They are more of cold water species, but just like stingrays, they're gonna hang out on the bottom. Their little eyes will pop up above the surface or as they kind of bury in, make you find them. They are really interesting species and might be a good substitute instead of keeping a stingray in your tank. Okay, so you know I've mentioned stingrays, the next one on my list, you probably won't be surprised, I'm going to say a shark. Now I know people have kept sharks in home aquariums, I've got some good friends that have, but I personally wouldn't recommend it. Some of the requirements that you need to care for these species and the compatibility when it comes to keeping them with other species can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Just like stingrays, sharks can be really messy eaters, which means you're gonna have to constantly battle those nutrients. Now, sharks also are gonna need a lot of space, just like stingrays do, and again, it's not something that I typically see in the average home aquarium. Now, if you are interested in keeping a shark, but I'm uh, not really sure, something that isn't quite as much of a commitment, and I know this one's a stretch, but I would say a large hermit crab. Hermit crabs are fascinating. They're going to keep your tank clean. They're going to eat detritus, but they're also a pretty intense predator. It's really cool to watch them scavenge for food. They can smell it and go after it in the tank, much like you would see a shark picking up a smell and going after some food in your tank. So if you're thinking about a shark, maybe redirect your attention to one of those really interesting larger hermit crab species. Okay, the 
fourth item today on my list is going to be moray eels. I wish I could recommend them because they are fascinating creatures. However, they really just get too big to safely recommend for home aquariums. Now, a lot of times you'll see them in public aquariums and they get to be pretty large and that's a great place for them. So if you love the look of moray eels, maybe consider a smaller species like the snowflake. I know a lot of people that keep these guys and they get along great with all sorts of tank inhabitants and a lot of times they have them target trained so they'll come up and they can take food from tongs so you can even learn to target feed them as well. Just not such a large species as you would have the moray. Okay, next up on my list is going to be a batfish. Now you might think, well, I don't really see that many batfish, but occasionally you'll find them pop up in local fish stores for sale. Sometimes you see the ones that are beautiful black with that orange neon stripe along the outside of their fins. And a lot of people want to keep those, but they only look like that when they're small. As they get older, they change shape and they change color and that vibrant black with the neon orange completely goes away. A lot of times they turn into these big uh, like dinner plate sized silver fish that really just aren't the most attractive fish. Another thing about them is that when they're young and that age, they can be a little bit tricky to take care of and their fins can get nipped a lot. So I wouldn't really recommend them for that reason as well. Another reason I wouldn't recommend them is as they get older, they tend to eat a lot of things which might not make them the best fit for your tank. Now, one swap that I would recommend, if you like that color, that bright black and the neon orange, maybe consider something like a gem tang. They're jet black with all of those little white spots or even a marine betta, another fish that fits the bill for that dark coloration. Now, if the orange is what drew your attention, maybe consider something like an Achilles tang. Now with any fish that you're adding to your tank, always make sure to do your research and check to make sure that they're compatible with what you already have and what you want to keep. Okay, last fish on my list today is going to be a pilot fish or a trevally fish. This is another fish that I don't see that often, but occasionally you do spot them for sale at local fish stores. And when they're young, they are gorgeous. They are bright yellow, probably about this size, and they're just really fun, colorful fish. However, this is another species just like the batfish that don't stay small. They actually get to be pretty sizable. Um, if you've ever seen some of the, uh, I believe it's Blue Planet has a video where a Javali is jumping out of the water and catching a bird um, in its mouth. Same species that starts out this small can be this big, if not larger. So wouldn't recommend those in a home aquarium. They're just gonna get way too big and they grow really fast. But if you like them because of their bright color, I would maybe recommend something like a yellow tang. Now, if you can't get yourself a yellow tang, maybe consider something like a lemon peel angel or another bright yellow colored fish that will stay significantly smaller than those pilot fish will. All right, that is going to wrap up this video. I'm curious, have I listed off all the fish that you would not recommend for people or did I forget something? Which fish do you tell people to avoid when it comes to picking out fish for their tank? Leave a comment, let me know. Okay, this has been Hillary for Waterlogs on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.